Today we're going to be looking at this brand new 2024 SE Hybrid Corolla I just picked up. So the question today is guys, have cars really changed in the past 30 years? Do new features make it worth the extra money? Is a seven month wait for a car really worth it? Let's find out. This SE Hybrid Corolla cost me $35,000, but you can get a base model non-hybrid for 27. The 1995 Dodge Neon we're comparing to would cost 25,000 Canadian mini bucks in today's money. Even though they both sell in the compact class and have basically the same wheelbase, the Corolla is four inches wider, a foot longer, and weighs as much as a Neon that has a Honda Goldwing on the roof. The Neon did come standard with airbags, but even a base Corolla comes standard with pre-collision avoidance and wireless Apple and Android Auto. The 2 liter in the Neon gets 26 miles per gallon, where the Corolla's 1.8 liter will get 40 miles per gallon on a hilly highway. Both make about 135 horsepower. This Neon was one of the cheapest cars you could buy in 1995, and the Corolla is one of the most affordable cars you can buy in today's shrinking small car market. Let's see how they compare. Okay, let's hop into the interior of these things. This seat is as far as back as it'll go. Got about six inches to the front. It's the same position I'd be sitting in over here on the driver's side. Lots of legroom. It's actually quite a spacious car. Because it's so old, it doesn't have a bunch of safety uh, features and shrouding and plastics just really crowding you on the inside, if that makes sense. It's a bit of a fishbowl, but it has very good visibility all around and lots of legroom for long trips. Kind of the same story with back here. This seat's all the way back. Um, my knees are just barely touching it. There's a car seat back here. I don't know if you guys noticed that or not, but you know, those giant seats here. And I'm rather impressed that this car seat can be in here. Both the seats can be all the way back. And like, it's easy to get the kid in and out. So points to Dodge for that, I guess. For anyone having a kid or already having a kid but need a beater. I mean, this is this is what you're looking for. That's a big seat and it fits in there. It's really nice. It just buckles right into the middle clips. Good to go. Up front uh, in 1995, these have a nice digital dash as well. Just kidding. That's a GPS because the speedometer doesn't work. But besides that, everything else still works very nicely from the day it was purchased. Nothing fancy about it. No AC. We got AM, FM, that's it. No tack, a couple dummy lights, got a temperature and a fuel gauge, but that's it. Here's a horn test. Kind of a clown car, sounds hilarious, but it works, it's very practical. It's hard plastic everywhere. There's no soft touch points, very, very scratchy everything. But rear defrost, I, I guess that's an option, maybe. Gets the job done. As far as trunk space goes, actually a pretty big trunk. You could uh, easily fit one, one and a half, maybe even two Masons in here if you really shoved them in there, chopped them up a little bit. Pretty usable, definitely enough for a couple of sets of golf clubs. So sitting in the Corolla now, this is my regular driving position. Lots of room with the knees. I'm not all hunched up like this while I'm going down the road. All the buttons accessible still. That's carried on throughout the years which is nice. Touch screen for all your blah blah settings and whatnot, but still volume knob, heater knob, fan knob. It's a nice step forward, but you can tell that it's still just meant to be a budget commuter car. We got soft touch, you know, dash and steering wheel now and still cloth seats, but it's, it's nothing fancy. We're not in a Rolls Royce here or anything. We're not in a Lexus equivalent of this. This is this is one of the cheapest cars on the market now. So this is the SE trim. But all this stuff is standard in the LE. Like this is what you get now. This is a, a fully functioning car. This is the same as the base model. You know, other than electronics, the electronics have changed throughout the years. But it's just a car. There's nothing too fancy. 
Comfortable seats. I will say they could use some lumbar though. Horn test. So we're in the back now. This is set to my six foot driving frame. And we have an inch, we have an inch here. So that correlates almost directly to the one inch ish longer wheelbase. I mean, this car is almost a foot longer, but it's basically the same wheelbase. And guess what? You have the same amount of space in here. Still, the back is a nice place to be as well. Got room to the roof, even with the sunroof. I wouldn't want to lean forward at all because I'm smacking my head there, but uh, yeah, other than that, it doesn't slope down too fast. You have a nice little pocket for your noggin. So this trunk, easily two masons can be put in here. Maybe two and a half if you cuddle, but I will say the opening is bigger on the neon. It was easier to get myself in there than in here. But once again, I'm going with two sets of golf clubs. Gonna be no problem. It's quite spacious actually. All your airport luggage will fit in here. So what's it like to uh, drive a hybrid, you might ask? Well, to be honest, fairly underwhelming. You just put it in D and it acts like an appliance. It says sport mode on it, just because I like the way the gas pedal feels better. A little more responsive, but that doesn't affect the efficiency or anything. Drives just like a car. Uh, it's a CVT, not a fan of them, so the RPMs don't really correlate to speed at all. They just kind of act as a generator for the batteries. And uh, yeah, that's that. It drives exactly the same as any other car, except for you can just go like this, press that little EV mode button, shuts it right off. And we're just going pure battery mode right now. So that's like a whopping 14 horsepower right now that we're putzing along in, in all wheel drive. It's quiet, I'll give it that. You can see there on the display that it's going from the battery to the wheels. And then if I floor it a little, engine kicks on and it starts powering everything. But 130 horse with over a 3000 pound car, you know, it's not a ton. It's not a speed demon. Mind you, I haven't floored it yet because we're still on the break-in period and I want to be nice to it. Turns really nice. I mean, brakes nice. It has a uh, B for, call it engine brake mode for you truckers out there. It's the same thing. As soon as you let off the pedal, it's like one pedal driving. Applies brakes, regenerates batteries. It's a little goofy to get used to, but I see how it would work going down long stretches of downhill highway. Nice backup camera. Weird convexy mirrors, but they all are now. Okay, sweet, let's go hop in a neon. The Dodge Neon now, same thing, except for this one is a three speed, not a CVT. And you know what? You can tell the difference while you're driving around. For sure, there's actual gears there and they actually do something. It's not quite as confusing as the hybrid, but it's motoring at its simplest form. The interior here, very bare bones, but I'm 28 years old. I've owned probably 25 cars, half of them being front wheel drive. And you know what? This is probably the best handling front wheel drive car I've ever driven. I have never seen anything lift off oversteer like this. It is hilarious. You, you turn in, lift off, it goes around a corner. I see why there's none of these left anymore because everyone has snapped them up for ice racing and rally cross. It's absolutely hilarious and I would love to drive one of these in a five-speed car. Icy day here today 
and you can tell the one wheel peel is inferior to the Corolla's all wheel drive. But, pretty plain Jane, nothing's gonna surprise you. It's just a car, just like the other car. Final thoughts, what did we learn today? How much have cars really changed in the past 30 years? Obviously the safety aspects with the camera and the sensors and the connectivity through the electronics, that has advanced a lot. That's, that's life, there's a lot more electronics in life now. But the basic formula of the car hasn't changed. We're not splitting the atom here. They've all got four wheels and a steering wheel, especially when they're both automatics. You just hit the pedal, go forward. Am I happy with the new purchase? Absolutely, I don't regret a single thing. That car is a nice place to be. It's quiet, it's comfortable, and it gets double the fuel mileage. It's just very interesting to see what roughly the same money gets you 30 years later. And, and I think it's good value for money nowadays. I mean, is there anything wrong with putts and the neon around? No, I did it for two years, you know, put uh, 30,000 kilometers on it. I'll miss it a little bit, but I'm very happy this car has finally come in after a seven month wait. Oof. Anyways, that's what I've been doing to kill the time around my house today, just comparing some cars. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope you had an awesome break. We will see you next Tuesday.